Sir, if you'll step up here next to me, please. I'll look here, sir. You'll raise your right hand. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, Seth, you got. I do. Thank you. If you have a seat. If you'll speak up and have that small black microphone there, that'll help me hear. If you'll tell me both your first name and your last name and spell them both. Bradley Everett, B R A D L E Y. E V E R E T T. Thank you. Questions? Mr. Everett, where are you employed? I'm employed with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation in the Crime Laboratory in the Serology DNA Unit. And what do you do there? I am a special agent forensic scientist and currently serving as the DNA technical leader. Can you tell me what training, education, and experience that you possess that allows you to perform your duties? I have a Bachelor of Science degree from Tennessee Tech University with a major in chemistry. And I also have a Master of Science degree from Vanderbilt University with a major in chemistry. I also had one year of training with the TBI um, in which I worked cases with court qualified examiners before I independently worked my own cases. And each year I'm required to have DNA training to stay abreast of any changes in technology. And can you tell me, basically, what do you do as far as your, your job description? Uh, typically, what I will do is to analyze evidence that's submitted to the crime laboratory for the presence of body fluids, things that may contain human DNA. Um, once I've identified a body fluid stain, I will perform DNA testing and obtain a DNA profile from that evidence. Um, Let's stop there. Okay, so we've got this exhibit that we can introduce now. So if you give that to the clerk, she knows which number she's going to mark that. And then if you wouldn't mind, take the, uh, Mr. Wolf White, so if you want that, and get that taken to Agent Little John. Okay? All right, start taking that. Thank you, Justin. Thank ahead, you. Sir. Now, can you tell me approximately, well, can you tell me approximately how many DNA examinations you performed? And Approximately, it would, it would be in the thousands of okay. tests that I've performed. How many years have you been employed with Tennessee Bureau of Investigation? Uh, for well over 12 years. And have you testified as an expert in the courts of Tennessee? Yes, sir, I have. And have you been designated as an expert in certain fields? Yes, sir, I have. And what field have you been designated? In the field of serology and DNA. And have you testified, in, can you tell us if you can approximate how many different counties you have testified in as an expert in serology and DNA. I've testified approximately 70 times in probably 25 different counties. Have you ever testified in Rutherford County, Tennessee? No, sir, I have not. Will this be your first time here then? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, at this point, we'd offer him as an expert in serology and DNA. Any objections, Mr. Mango? No, sir. Pal, I'll give his opinion. Agent Everett, uh, at some point, did you become involved in investigating the evidence that was presented to you uh, wherein Miss Clantina Stewart was the victim and Miss Shanterica Madden was the suspect or defendant? Yes, sir, I did. And can you tell us when, uh, I noticed that you have generated two reports, is that correct? Yes, sir. And the second report, does it contain all the information that's in the first report? The second report contains um, all of the items that were tested, yes, sir. Okay. And although we'll introduce both reports, can you explain why there are two reports? The first report would um, be considered a serology screening uh, report in which I actually screen the evidence for the presence of body fluids. And the second report would be the actual DNA testing that was performed. And I believe the first report would be dated uh, July the 15th, 2011. Yes, sir. Be three pages long. Yes, sir. 
do you recognize what I am showing on the screen? And you may be able to see it better on the big screen if you look over here. Okay. And it appears to be a three-page document. Uh, let me get the right one. Let me get it. I may have to come back to that. Let me see. Page three with your signature on it. Yes, sir. Okay, and just see the three pages. Your Honor, we'd like to make that the exhibit. All right. What number that be, Madam Clerk? One sixty-six, sir. Thank you. Now, going to your second report, it it appears that you have listed, uh, I think, eighteen different items. Is that correct? Or is there seven? There eight, eighteen in total. And I'll show you the, your report on the screen. Does that appear to be your report? And here we start down this side with a listing of up to 17A. And then when we flip the page, you see exhibit 18A, is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, as far as your testimony, would you feel comfortable if we just simply go through the different exhibits and have you indicate what examination you performed on each of those and the result. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's start first with Exhibit 1A, which is the known blood sample of Plantina Stewart, who was the victim in this case. What were you requested to do with it and what did you do? For the known blood standards, um, those are considered reference standards and what I did was to perform DNA testing and obtain the known DNA profile for Clantina Stewart. Can you give us the nutshell version of DNA evidence? DNA is a chemical, if you want to think of it that way, that's in most of the cells of our bodies and it determines what we look like, our hair color, our eye color. Uh, it's sometimes referred to as our genetic blueprint. And as far as DNA, do any two people have the same DNA? With the exception of identical twins, no. Now, as far as Exhibit 1A, which was the known blood sample of Plantina Stewart, what, what did you do with that particular sample? For that blood sample, I, I took a small cutting of that, isolated the DNA from it, and obtained the DNA profile for Clintina Stewart. And what can you do with a DNA profile? For specifically for the reference sample, what I can do is compare that known profile to DNA profiles obtained from physical evidence taken from a crime scene. Okay. So tell me if I'm wrong. If you, if you have a person's DNA profile, such as if you were to take a blood sample from me and get a, a profile from that, if I were to lick a stamp, uh, then it would be possible for you to use that blood getting my DNA profile and check it with the saliva sample and come up with the fact that it was me that licked the stamp. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, after you obtain that particular profile, you're also asked to look at Exhibit 2A, which is a broken knife in the dumpster. Is that right? Yes, sir. What did you do with that? And what, what do you do when you do an examination of something like a broken knife? What procedure do you go through? In this particular case, I will describe the evidence. First, do a visual examination of the evidence to determine if there was any blood staining on the knife. Um, visual examination, I could tell there was some staining on the knife. Um, my next step was to perform presumptive testing for blood. And those tests came back positive for both, um, both pieces of the knife. There was a knife handle and a knife blade. And my next step was to determine whether that blood was 
human or not. So I did a further test, determined that it was human DNA, human DNA was present. And from that point, I collected a sample from both the handle and from the blade, and I collected those using a cotton swab, using distilled water, collected a small area of that. And that was what I could use for doing DNA testing and obtaining the DNA profiles for both the handle and from the blade as well. And based on the DNA testing of the handle and the blade, both of those DNA profiles match Clintina Stewart. And <clears throat> from that point, I actually did a statistical calculation of the probability of someone else other than Clintina Stewart having that profile. And the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile from the African American, Caucasian, Southeastern, or Southwestern Hispanic populations exceeds the current world population. Okay. <clears throat> now, in general terms, what does that mean to the jury? In my opinion, the blood that's on the knife handle and the knife blade belong to Clintina Stewart. Now, let me ask you this, because we are talking about the knife, and I understand, was the knife examined by you and other members of the TBI the crime lab for other purposes, other yes. than the DNA? Yes, sir. What happens when an item of evidence is sent in and it is to be examined for, say, example, fingerprints, DNA, and things of that nature? When a piece of evidence needs to be examined for multiple disciplines, like latent prints and DNA, which is not uncommon, I will actually get together with the latent print examiner and we will discuss and look at the evidence and determine which areas are appropriate for the latent print examiner and which areas are appropriate for DNA testing. Do you determine who's going to do what examination first? We will work, work it at the same time. So it's mainly a, a point of if a surface of a piece of evidence is not going to provide a latent print, then that surface is open for DNA testing. Okay. Is there anything else that in your findings that you believe is significant for this jury to know about the broken knife in the dumpster? No, sir. Okay. And exhibit number 3A is a jacket, turned out to be an MTSU blue jacket from the dumpster. Can you tell us about your examination, what you did, and what your results were? Yes, sir. For the blue jacket, I tested it for the presence of human blood. And on the jacket, I ended up testing three different areas. And a cutting was taken from the back of the jacket and from the left sleeve cuff of the jacket. <coughs> and I also ended up taking a cotton swab and swabbing the inside cuffs of the jacket and the main point of that was to try and determine a potential wearer of the jacket at one time. For the two cuttings which were taken from the back of the jacket and the left sleeve cuff, presumptive test indicated the presence of blood and further test indicated that it, there was human DNA present. I performed DNA testing on that and the DNA profile matched Clantina Stewart for both cuttings that were taken. For the third area where I took the swab of the sleeve cuffs, presumptive tests failed to indicate the presence of blood in that area. However, further tests did, in, did indicate that there was a presence of human DNA. So I performed DNA testing on that area and the DNA profile from that area as well matched Clantina Stewart. And again, for all three areas, for all three profiles, the probability exceeded the world population that someone else would have that particular profile. So you tested areas that you thought were, were blood stains or something like that, you could get DNA, is that correct? Yes, sir. And then you also tested areas where normal wear you may have skin cells or something that would give you DNA that would help identify the person who wore that jacket. Yes, sir. And in those results, you found that uh, the DNA matched Tina Stewart. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, 4A is a bra from the dumpster. Can you tell us what you did with it and what your results were? 
For the bra, I examined that for the presence of blood. My presumptive test failed to indicate the presence of blood. I did further tests which did indicate the presence of human DNA on that bra. And in that area, what I did was, again, take a cotton swab with, with distilled water and to swab the stitching area of the bra where it would touch the skin and collect some samples from, from that that would potentially be skin cells. I performed DNA testing on that swab and the DNA profile that I obtained was consistent with a mixture of DNA. The major contributor to the profile matched Shenterica Madden. And for that profile, the probability of an unrelated individual having that same DNA profile for the African American Let me see. For the African American population is 1 in 36.8 billion. For the Caucasian population, it was approximately 1 in 103 billion. For the Southeastern Hispanic population, it's approximately 1 in 366 billion. And for the Southwestern Hispanic population, it's approximately 1 in 212 billion. Um, Exhibit 1A for my lab report, Clantina Stewart, she could not be excluded as a minor contributor to that mixed profile from the bra. And for the probability of randomly selecting an individual who would be included as a contributor to that mixed profile, for the African American population, it's approximately 1 in 9,940. For the Caucasian population, it's approximately 1 in 139,000. For the Southeastern Hispanic population, it's approximately 1 in 213,000. And for the Southwestern Hispanic population, it's approximately 1 in 354,000. Now, let's see if we can kind of explain that a little bit to the jury. As far as the bra that was in the dumpster, you, you did determine that, in your opinion, that the bra did contain DNA material attributable or chem coming from Shanterica Madden. Yes, sir. And looking statistically, it sounds like you're pretty sure of that. Yes, sir. And then as far as the minor contributor, you found DNA material that said that Contina Stewart could not be excluded. Yes, sir. So it could be her or it could not be her. But yes, sir. The, the statistical sorry. calculation, the smallest number, would be 1 in 9,940. If you randomly started testing people, there would be a 1 in 9,940 chance of it being someone else. Okay. And just so the jury would explain it, if I've got it wrong, you tell me. If you were to test 9,940 people, uh, you would probably come up with a profile that matched what you found as the minor contributor. Statistically speaking, that at that point, there may be someone who could not be excluded as well. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell us about that particular item of evidence? No, sir. Okay, now we look at Exhibit 5A, which is the blanket from the dumpster. Let's stop there, Mr. Newman. I need to take my afternoon break. I want you to step, I'm going to step down from there. We'll take a 20 minute break. This will be our afternoon break. Remember our instructions to you not to discuss the case with anyone or let anyone discuss the presence. Everybody rise, please. Okay, we'll stand at recess for 20 minutes. Need uh, be? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
take up a seat. And Mr. Newman, you can continue with your direct examination. <coughs> Thank you, sir. I believe that we had uh, just asked about the blanket from the dumpster, uh, Exhibit 5A, is that correct? Yes, sir. And does that appear to be the type of the blanket that you examined, the same in color, similar appearance? I did not examine a blanket, sir. Okay. Was there a, a blanket submitted to you for examination? A blanket was submitted, yes, sir. And why was it that it was not examined? At TBI, we have a policy of evidence um, consumption policy that we will work approximately 10 items in a case and not consume any more evidence than is necessary. Okay. And this was for the record exhibit 123? Uh, and, and you, I'm, I'm not asking you a question, but I'm just making sure it's on the record. But let's talk about your policy as, as far as pertaining to blood. Let's say that there is a crime and there's several, several areas of blood in a, in a particular room. How many items of evidence will y'all examine? The policy for TBI is to begin working 10 items at a time and then issue reports out after that. Okay. All right. Now, 6A, was it examined, which was the comforter from the bed? No, sir. And 7A was swabs from Chanterica Madden's hands where they worked? Yes, sir. Okay. And what does it mean when I say swabs from her hands? What would that be? Those are cotton swabs. Again, they'll be typically wet with distilled water and the individual's hand will be swabbed to collect sample. For example, uh, in this type of case, if someone had blood on their hands, detective would take the swabs, he would swab the hands, try to remove some of the material so that he could submit it to the lab for you to test, see if it's number one blood, and number two, whose blood it is. Is that right? That would be typical, yes. Okay. And what examination did you do on that particular swab 7A? This exhibit consisted of three swabs. They were labeled number one, number two, and number three. I screened each swab for the presence of blood and found that each swab did indicate the presence of blood and further test on swab number three indicated the presence of human DNA. I then performed DNA testing on swab number three, and the DNA profile that I obtained was consistent with a mixture of DNA from Clantina Stewart and Shanterica Madden. <coughs> and the probability of randomly selecting, selecting an unrelated individual who would be included as a contributor to this DNA mixture profile is approximately one in 2.3 million for the African American population, one in 60.2 million for the Caucasian population, one in 44.3 million for the Southeastern Hispanic population, and one in 58.2 million for the Southwestern Hispanic population. Okay. Now, as far as what you're, you're basically telling us, for example, if the detectives had swabbed, for instance, my hands, which I think you observed uh, do not have blood on them. Uh, would he obtain DNA material from a swab of my hand normally? Most likely he would, yes. And what type of DNA material would he get? That would be from skin cells. Okay. And so it, that swab would normally contain my DNA because my hand was swabbed? Yes, sir. And then if I had somebody else's blood on my hand, uh, that would be removed as well with, with a swab? Yes, sir. And so you would have a mixture if someone had someone else's blood on their hands and the hand was swapped. I would agree with that. Okay. <clears throat> now, can you explain why there are three swabs? There were three different areas of the right hand that were swabbed. Okay. And do you know whether or not it de they designated what areas those were? Yes, sir, they did. And what designation did one, two, and three have? I'll have to refer to my notes. Yes. Sir. 
Swab number one was designated right palm. Swab number two was also designated right palm. Swab number three was designated inner right thumb. Now, just holding up my thumb, where, where would it where would it be on the when you say inner right thumb? Are you talking about inner here or I, here? I don't. I didn't collect the swab, so okay. I, I don't know. Okay. Now, <clears throat> can you tell us about a number 8A, which is a swab from the bedroom? Yes, sir. I screened this swab for the presence of blood, and my testing indicated that blood was present, and further test indicated that human DNA was present. I performed DNA testing, and the DNA profile I obtained matched Clintina Stewart and the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile from the African-American, Caucasian, or Hispanic populations, again, exceeds the current oral population. Okay. Now, the swab from the bedroom, do you see that particular item where, where y'all have different numbers? This is number 12A that the police did, and y'all have, I think, number 8A. Uh, but that particular location, would that produce the type of information that you've testified to today as far as DNA being blood and being Clantina Stewart blood? The profile I obtained matched Clantina Stewart. Okay. Now, what about a swab from the hallway? Again, my test indicated there was the presence of blood and human DNA. And the DNA profile that I obtained, again, matched Clantina Stewart. And the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile from those population groups, again, exceeds the current oral population. Now, as far as the swabs that you've got, you, know, you have some indication as to where they came from because the police fill you out a report. But do you have any indication as to how they get there? No, sir. And would it be just speculation on your part to try to establish how some particular item of DNA actually got there? Yes, sir. With DNA, I can obtain what the DNA profile is, but when it was placed there or how it was placed there, I cannot discern that information. How long will blood keep DNA material in it? If blood is kept at room temperature and it's kept dry, it will last for, for decades. Now, I believe that we had stopped at uh, swab 9A, and, uh, am I correct? I yes. We're at 10A now? Yes, sir. Can you tell us about swab from bedroom 10A? 10A, no examination was performed on that swab. Okay. And can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury why? Again, it goes back to TBI policy on testing. We will not consume more evidence than is necessary in testing um, other swabs were tested in that case and a report issued. Okay. Now, 11A is a phone from the living room. And I want to show you what has previously been marked as exhibit, oh. I'm sorry, on the phone itself? Okay. okay. I think they're 3B and 3A, and I'll put those this on the screen for you. And I'll back it off just a little bit and flip it over for you. And is there anything on that phone that helps you to identify it? Yes, sir. The sticker that has the lab number 11006272-11A 
and it also has my initials, BRE. Okay. And is that the phone that you examined? Yes, sir, it is. And just going from the logo, does that appear to be an Apple iPhone? Yes, sir, it does. And then did you do any testing as far as the case itself? Yes, sir, I did. And is there anything here that helps you designate that? Yes, sir. Again, it has my laboratory number and my initials, BRE. Now, there are two other items in the package, which I don't think have been marked, but can you tell us what these are? It looks like they're designated A and B. Yes, sir. Those are swab cartons that contain a swab that I took. I designated one swab A and one swab B. Swab A was of the cell phone holder or the cover, and swab B was a swab taken from the earpiece area of the phone. Okay. So there were two specific swabs that you had to test? Yes, sir. And can you tell us what your results were? First of all, I did a visual examination and it failed to reveal any blood staining on the phone. So again, I took a swab from the phone cover and a separate swab from the top of the phone around the earpiece area. For the phone cover, my test indicated the presence of human DNA and the DNA profile was consistent with a mixture of two or more individuals. Clantina Stewart and Sh Shanterica Madden could not be excluded as possible contributors and the probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual who would be included as a contributor to this DNA mixture profile is approximately 1 in 1,287 for the African American population, 1 in 7,022 for the Caucasian population, 1 in 8,795 for the southeastern Hispanic population, and 1 in 9,479 for the southwestern Hispanic population. And in my report, I have listed the areas that the statistical calculation was performed. For the uh, top of the phone, my test indicated there was a limited amount of human DNA present. And because of that, no DNA profile was obtained due to an insufficient amount of DNA. Let me ask you a hypothetical. If Shanterica Madden uses, uh, not Shanterica Madden, but if Miss Tina Stewart uses the cell phone on a regular basis, and also at some point Miss Madden also comes into contact with it, would that be consistent with your findings? It could be, it could be explained if two people are handling the same phone, it's possible to obtain both profiles. Your Honor, that's exhibits, uh, and I guess we should make these two swaps exhibits now if we could. Okay. But that was exhibit 3A and B. All right. Let's just put the, let's do swap C and D. Okay, so the phone is what? Uh, Ma'am. The phone is what number? The phone is 3A. It covers 3B. Okay, let's do this. C and D. All right. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Now, as far as uh, item number 12A, knives from the dumpster, uh, that was not the broken knife, is that correct? No, sir, it wasn't. Those were the knives that were intact. There was no, no damage to them that you, when you examined them? They were not broken, no. Okay. And what examination did you perform, if any, and what were your results? I did a visual examination of these knives, and there was no blood staining present visually. So for each knife, I took a cotton swab, again, wet it with distilled water, and swabbed the handles of each knife, and I did that separately. And I performed DNA testing on each of the knives, and the test on both knives, the results for both knives, test indicated the presence of a limited amount of human DNA from both of the handles. 
and except for the gender marker, I was unable to obtain a DNA profile from either knife handle. So due to the limited information, no further interpretation was made for those knife handles. What is a gender marker? It determines whether there's a male or a female present. And were you able to determine a gender marker? No, sir, I was not. Okay. Now, as far as item 13A, which is a bra from Chanterica Madden, can you tell us about your examination of it and your results? Yes, sir. I examined the bra for the presence of blood. My test indicated blood was present and further test indicated there was human DNA. I took a cutting from that area, performed DNA testing, and found that the DNA profile matched Chanterica Madden. And the probability of an unrelated individual having that same DNA profile from the previous population groups I've stated uh, exceeds the current oral population. Okay. So, on that, can you tell when that blood was put there? No, sir, I cannot. Can you even give us an estimate as to when that blood was put there? No, sir, I cannot. And item 14A is clothing from Chanterica Matten. Yes, sir. What was your examination and your results, please? I examined a pair of blue jeans and a t-shirt. And I, I, I examined those for the presence of blood. And I examined three cuttings that were taken from these items. A cutting was taken from the front left leg of the jeans. And a cutting was taken from the back right leg of the jeans. <coughs> and a cutting was taken from the front of the t-shirt. And for all three cuttings, presumptive test indicated there was blood and human DNA present. I performed DNA testing on the cutting from the front left leg of the jeans. And the DNA profile was consistent with a mixture of DNA from Clintina Stewart and Shanterica Madden. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual who would be included as a contributor to this DNA mixture profile is approximately 1 in 2.3 million for the African American population, 1 in 60.2 million for the Caucasian population, 1 in 44.3 million for the Southeastern Hispanic population, and 1 in 58.2 million for the Southwestern Hispanic population. I then went on and performed DNA testing on the back right leg of the genes, the cutting that was made from that area, and the DNA profile matched Clintina Stewart. And the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile, again from those population groups, exceeds the current oral population. And finally, I did testing on the front of the shirt. And the DNA profile obtained from that area matched Shanterica Madden. And again, the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile, again, exceeds the current oral population. Okay. Now, you've talked to us about a mixture on the front leg. And when you, when you determine that there's blood and then you do your swab, are you able, once you do your DNA, to tell whether or not you're getting your DNA from blood or epithelial cells? No, sir. For example, if I were to rub vigorously on my pant leg, if I do that vigorously enough, would I likely leave those cells? It would be possible, yes. And if I had somebody else's blood on there, you would also could find DNA from that? Yes, sir. And if I were to rub a blood spot vigorously on my leg with my hand, could that cause a mixture of both? It would be possible, yes. Now, as far as the back leg, you only found DNA in the blood of Tina, uh, for, for Tina Stewart, is that correct? Yes, sir. And then as far as the front of the shirt, uh, a green shirt, I think it was, is that correct? Yes, sir. You did find uh, a blood spot. Is that right? Yes, sir. The front of the shirt tested positive for blood, and I took a cutting from the front of the shirt. Now, as far as the front of the blood of, of the shirt and the bra, 
did those two spots line up? I don't know that they lined up. They were in similar areas. Okay. Were they sort of in the center of the shirt? Okay. Were they close to the same area if they were being worn? Yes, sir. Could you tell whether or not that blood came from the outside inward or from the inside outward? No, sir, I could not. Okay. Do you know how long it had been there? No, sir. Is there any way you could even estimate how long it had been there? Not from my testing, no, sir. Can you tell us how it got there? No, sir. Now, item 15A is a swab from the bedroom as well. Was that tested? No, sir. Okay, and again, the same policy, I assume? Yes, sir. Okay, and then 16A is a swab from the door? Is yes, that sir. that correct? <clears throat> Tell us what you did on that and what your results were, if any. For this exhibit, I performed screening for the presence of blood and my test indicated that blood was present as well as human DNA. And I performed DNA testing and found that the DNA profile matched Plantina Stewart and that the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile again exceeds the current oral population. Okay. It seems that we have multiple swabs from the bedroom. We have 8A, 10A, and also 15A. Is there any further designation in your reports or in your information that tells us what part of the bedrooms these came from? Um, let me check my notes and I'll see if there was any documentation on the yes. outer packaging. For 16A, I just have one blood swab was what was written on the outer packaging. Yes, sir. Now, I think 16A was a swab from the door. And I think what I'd ask about was 15A, uh, 8A, and uh, 10A. For my lab report exhibit number 8A? Yes, sir. It had from rear, from rear bed written on the swab carton. Okay. And that'd be the rear bed area, I assume, what they're trying to convey to you? Um, I, I don't know for sure. It says rear bed. It says right. rear bed. Okay. <clears throat> and the other items, I, I don't have a description. Okay, thank you, sir. Now, as far as 16A, I think, is a swab from, from the door. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And can you tell us what your results were and findings are concerning that? Sixteen A swab from the door. My test indicated there was the presence of blood and human DNA again, and the DNA profile matched Clintina Stewart. And the probability again exceeds the current oral population that an unrelated individual would have the same DNA profile. Okay. 
Now, as far as 17A, there was a towel submitted to you that was found in the parking lot. What examination did you perform on it and what were your results? I screened this towel for the presence of blood and my test indicated the presence of blood and human DNA. The DNA profile that I obtained matched Clantina Stewart and again the probability of an unrelated individual having the same DNA profile exceeds the current world population. And can you tell us about 18A? 18A These are the known swabs from Shenterica Madden. And again, just as I did for the known blood sample from Clantina Stewart, I also obtained a known DNA profile uh, using these swabs for Shenterica Madden so that I could make comparisons to the physical evidence in the case. Okay. <clears throat> now, after you had conducted all of your examinations, did you prepare a report? Yes, sir, I did. And I'll show you what appears to be a five-page report, and I'll just, and it appears to have the date of 10, 13, 11. Is that the date you would have authored that report? Yes, sir, it is. And we can see that you list the 17 items on that page, then the 18th item, and then your results, which you've gone through with us on the remaining pages with the numbers beside them, and down to 18, and then it tells the disposition of those, what will happen to them, but they need to be picked up within 30 days. And you sign your report, is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, all the answers that you've given me, is, are they all to a reasonable degree of scientific certainty concerning your area of expertise? Yes, sir. Judge would like to make his report and exhibit. And I believe those will be in the frame. Right. That'll be the next number to exhibit. Any questions, Mr. Brown? No, sir. Any questions for our jurors? If I say any, thanks, sir. You can step down. You're Thank free you. to stay in the corner, free to go. Next. Now, you're out.